Thank you. I'm going to present the history of the dietary fiber definition and analysis. The history of dietary fiber dates back to the benefit of bran in the ancient Greece and John F. John H. Kellogg's claim in the 1930s that wheat bran improved constipation. So in 1930s, Kellogg had a promotion. Kellogg's bran is become a standard remedy for constipation. At that time, they measured fiber as crude fiber. Crude fiber is the residue of a plant food left after extraction with a solvent, dilute acid, and dilute alkali. Uh, the food fraction isolated and quantitated as crude fiber does not include many of the fiber component. Then in 1953, Dr. Hipsley first coined the phrase dietary fiber in an article on pregnancy toxemia. The term dietary fiber was a shorthanded term for the constituent of the plant cell wall and included the cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin. In 1960s, Dr. Ben Sust introduced analytical method for acid detergent fiber and neutral detergent fiber. Acid detergent fiber correspond to cellulose and lignin. Neutral detergent fiber correspond to insoluble dietary fiber fraction. Then in 1970s, Dr. Trial and Bucket adopted the term dietary fiber coined by Hipsley. They published dietary fiber hypothesis in conjunction with the Western diseases. They linked the lack of unprocessed high fiber food in a typical Western diet to such conditions as heart disease and colorectal cancer. In 1974, they proposed the dietary fiber definition as the remnant of a plant component that are resistant to hydrolysis by human elementary enzymes. So to meet this Dr. Travel's definition, uh, methods for dietary fiber determination have evolved. First AOAC method was approved in 1985, AOAC 9 8529. So usually AOAC has a year of publication in the method number. It is often called as a Prosky method. Then subsequent modification to AOAC 985.29 was approved in 1991. It is often called as a Lee method, but Lee is not Lee anymore, it's now Sujan Cho. <laughs> So I want to explain the background of developing dietary fiber method at Kellogg. In 1984, Kellogg had a big claim on all brain. At last, some news about cancer you can live with. So this claim was endorsed by National Cancer Institute. As far as I remember, FDA was not happy at all but didn't take any action because it's a sister agency, NCI, endorsed the claim. But this case went to US Congress. So head of NCI testified that by having healthy lifestyle, including consumption of a healthy food, no smoking and exercise, we can reduce the risk of chronic diseases by one third. Then many other experts testified a similar thing in front of the U.S. Congress. So eventually, uh, the U.S. Congress passed Nutrition Labeling and Education Act. Some people call it as National Lawyers Employment Act, NLEA. Uh, so I want to briefly go over principle of AOH method. Both methods use enzymatic digestion. Uh, the sample goes through a series of digestion by alpha amylase, protease, and amyloglucosidase. The, then we add four parts of ethanol to precipitate soluble fiber. Then uh, precipitate are filtered, dried, and weighed for residue, and correct for residual protein. In case of 98529, uh, uh, 
we are using phosphate buffer, but phosphate buffer co-precipitate with the soluble fiber. In case of 99143, we are using organic buffer. It has a less variability than uh, AOAC 98529. So in NLAA finalized in January 1993, FDA recommended AOAC 98529 and 991.3 for total dietary fiber method. Soluble insoluble labeling, FDA recommended 991.43, USDA recommended 991.43 for total soluble and insoluble fiber labeling. In other countries, like Australia, Japan, Mexico, and majority of European countries have adopted a definition of dietary fiber proposed by Trial and Bucket. The only exception was the UK. At that time, in Europe, there were two committees dealing with dietary fiber definition. One was Scientific Committee on Food, another one is the CMC. It has a long name. I don't know. Uh, how they came with the CMC for this abbreviation, as an abbreviation. Uh, by the way, uh, Dr. James of the UK prepared the recommendation of the SCF. Uh, they recommended redefinition of a dietary fiber as the plant cell wall non such a polysaccharide. Uh, at that time, they found NSP consumption, consumption of a non starch polysaccharide, had no correlation with the colon cancer incidence, but it correlated with the stool output. When they combined the NSP plus resistance of such, there was an inverse correlation with colon cancer incidence. British Nutrition Foundation Task Force of 1990 recommended that Term dietary fiber become obsolete in the scientific literature and the term non starchy polysaccharide be used instead. Of the 13 countries represented at the CMC meeting, only one supported the definition arrived by S, uh, SCF. So, majority of European countries believe that dietary fiber definition should not be limited to carbohydrate in particular non starchy polysaccharide. Because of this debate, uh, AOAC conducted two international survey on dietary fiber definition and analysis to determine if there was a need for update. In the first survey, initi initiated in 1992, 147 professionals participated. 59% supported the inclusion of a non-digestible oligosaccharide in the dietary fiber definition. In the second survey, 65% supported the inclusion of NDO, non-digestible oligosaccharide, as part of dietary fiber. 80% supported the inclusion of resistant starch in the fiber definition. 6% believed that dietary fiber should include non starch polysaccharide or plant cell wall component only. And 18% of scientists supported abolishment of the term dietary fiber. In 1995, AOAC had a workshop on definition and analysis of a complex carbohydrate and dietary fiber. We developed a consensus statement, non-digestible oligosaccharide should be included as a part of dietary fiber, and dietary fiber in turn included in the definition of a complex carbohydrate. And also, we had a consensus that message to quantitate these entities should be validated by AOAC. At that time, there was no single official method that fully recovered all of the fiber component, including non-digestible oligosaccharide. So after this consensus statement, AOAC uh, actively worked on validation of uh, non-digestible oligosaccharide method. Inulin method was uh, approved in 1997, 
polydextrose method was approved in 2000. In 2001, Dr. Okuma and Mastani Chemical developed total dietary fiber method, which recovers non-digestible oligosaccharide. Uh, Dr. Dennis Gordon is the one who collaboratively validated this method. Uh, so it received the official first action 2001. In 2009 and 2011, actually it's the same method, Dr. McCleary came up with a total dietary fiber method using different buffer, malate and acetate buffer, but principle of using series of enzymatic digestion is the same. So principle of using HPLC to determine non-digestible oligosaccharide is the same. There might be some uh, minor difference, but principle is about the same. Resistance touch method was approved in 2002. Then I want to explain what the new methods are. So again, the principle is the same. So when we precipitate a dietary fiber, soluble fiber, and recover a residue as a dietary fiber, supernatant, F, supernatant was measured uh, by HPLC technique. Total dietary fiber is a conventional total dietary fiber plus non-digestible oligosaccharide. In 2001, Institute of Medicine proposed the following definition. Uh, Dr. Joanne Slavin and Dr. Joji Fahey were uh, part of IOM, right? So they proposed the following definition. Dietary fiber consists of a non-digestible carbohydrate, DP unit of three or higher, and lignin that are intrinsic and intact in plant. Added fiber consists of isolated, non-digestible carbohydrate that have beneficial physiological effect in human. Total fiber is the sum of dietary fiber and added fiber. So here, dietary fiber definition includes non-digestible oligosaccharide. In ninth Fahoni Fiber Symposium, uh, LCIC North America Carbohydrate Committee conducted a survey on dietary fiber definition. Based on this survey, LCIC confirmed the inclusion of non-digestible oligosaccharide and lignin as dietary fiber. In addition, at least one physiological benefit was added to meet the definition of dietary fiber. In May 2016, FDA announced the following definition. Non-digestible, soluble, and insoluble carbohydrate with three or more monomeric unit and lignin that are intrinsic and intact in plant. Isolated or synthetic non-digestible carbohydrate with three or more monomeric unit determined by FDA to have physiological effects that are beneficial to human health. So FDA further explained that intrinsic and intact dietary fiber include brands obtaining by grinding, et cetera. So uh, this new definition presents some analytical challenge. So as of now, Codex Elementary Commission recommend AOAC 991.43 for conventional fiber analysis and 201.125 for the dietary fiber including non-digestible oligosaccharide. None of these methods can predict at least one physiological benefit of isolated or synthetic fiber. If we know the composition, we can calculate dietary fiber content. However, in many cases, we are dealing with food containing mixture of dietary fiber, sometimes unknown ingredient. There is no way we can predict physiological benefit if this one really meets dietary fiber definition or not. And uh, in case of second point, it's just a minor comment. Definition of isolated fiber should be more clearly defined. Okay. 
I want to use a rice bran fiber as an example. During the manufacture of rice bran fiber, some starches are removed from rice bran without altering chemical and physiological properties of dietary fiber present in rice bran. To make one kilogram of rice bran fiber, it need 1.5 or 2 kilogram of rice bran. Can we really say this is an isolated fiber? I'm just asking a question. So in summary, there was a crude fiber and acid detergent fiber, non-digestible, uh, neutral detergent fiber. Then now we have AOAC 985299 and 201125. Now next step, someone should develop the method meeting FDA definition of dietary fiber. It will be a big challenge. Thank you. <laughs>